This is my crybaby wah, and it's not working. There is no wah, it sounds more like a volume pedal. Here's a quick overview of the wah pedal with the uh, interior and the circuit board. And I'm pointing out the main components of the inductor and the capacitor. Those are most suspect to failure. And here is a quick photo of the fix with the new capacitor being the yellow component that was installed fixing the wah pedal. It works perfect now. And now we're gonna go into the details. All right, this is demonstrating the fix to my wah wah pedal. And the fix is to have a genius friend that can do electrical stuff and diagnose it. But I called up uh, Dunlop in Benicia, California, and they thought that I definitely needed to replace the inductor. And it turned out that my genius friend, Mark Comer, <laughs> replaced an inductor and it didn't change it, the wah. And then, what did you do to troubleshoot this here? I <clears throat> uh, looked at the schematic and figured if the inductor is good, then it must be one of the caps that was in parallel with it, because resistors usually don't go bad, and if they do, they look burned. And uh, I saw this guy was in the schematic, so I took a part that I had and just jumpered it with a with a same value part and all of a sudden it started working. So I figured that this part was bad, which it was. And uh, I removed it and replaced it with an equal value part. Uh, a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Yeah, it's not an SMD one like this, but what I is, mounted it to the board. What is SMD? <clears throat> surface mount. Surface SMD surface mount. Yeah, SMD, SMT. Uh, I've heard it called both, but um, yeah, it's not a surface mount part, but you can still surface mount it. So you didn't have to take this board off. You were able to. Yeah, just... I pulled the board off. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay. Well, because my uh, my power wasn't able to. It's too fat for that hole. Mm -hmm. And then, so I got you a new one of these too, because yours right here. Yeah, I replaced it. It was pretty, uh, pretty gnarly. Oh yeah, I think I had a battery corroded in that one time. Yeah, so throw that away and. I do have extras of those. Put this one in its place. All right, so you pulled the board off. You had to undo these these uh, washers here, right? Nuts. Yeah, get you a set of these. And those right there, huh? Yeah. And then you just unscrewed it here. Yeah, one screw, pulled one it out. One screw. And then I reset your pot so it's in the best. Yeah, area. that was the wiggling. Best. Well, cause you can roll it around yeah. and set it to where it sounds best. I feel like it sounds I'm still, best. I'm gonna take it out and which is typical, you know, electrolytic caps, they leak, they dry out, they fail, you know? That's what capacitors do, they leak and then they fail. Yeah, so you, where did you get the schematics for this? Uh, so they're all pretty much the same. I mean, this is a newer one. Instead of using transistors, it's using uh, op amps. This is like 20 years old, though. Use this to pull while I'm hitting that. So I'll hit that and I'll pull, and then I'll hit this and I'll push. And once I get one that lifts and the other one's loose, then I just go back in there and remove it. All right. So, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this piece off here so you can see what I did. Yeah, I would have gone the wrong down the wrong road with uh, what I heard from the manufacturer. I would have bought the inductor and then I would have put it on with the sloppy soldering work. This iron's not even hot yet. So what are you doing? You're pulling off excess with that? Yeah, I'm taking the solder off.
I've never really seen that. Is that just a copper thing? Yeah, this is called a solder wick. So it's got rosin flux embedded in it. And then so this is the part that I use. Here, I'll get, a, I'll get another one. So I bent the leads so that they would fit on these surface mount traces. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up with up a little bit this is how I clean it I burn the shit out of my fingers every time but that's okay I've got nine more so that's going to fit see mm-hmm see how the those leads are bent just right okay okay now cleanliness is the key so I'll be right back and your wife's nail polish remover, which is acetone. acetone. Acetone's good stuff. I use that to clean a lot of things because it's very corrosive too. It can also ruin a lot of things. Yeah. But it's great for removing flux residue. So we just keep that super clean. Right there. Now we're gonna pick a lead that we're gonna wanna do first. I'm gonna do the negative lead first. So I'm going to pre-tin this negative lead. Okay? So the negative lead is pre-tinned. Now I'm gonna take this guy Why not to burn myself too badly? This is some stuff that I got from a place that I know of. That's definitely not my work. I think you're being facetious. So that is some flux paste. And we're going to get this in a position where we're going to be able to achieve our goal. Robot surgery. And then we'll clean that up a little bit. We'll reflow it. Just because I don't like, there's a peak. There's a peak right there on the solder joint. And I don't like it. So, I'll reflow that. Wow, fuck. And of course, if you lift a trace or something, you can always go back to the schematic. Like that trace, if it were lifted, you can, you can tag it on right there on that side of that resistor. And then this trace looks like it goes to uh, ground. So you're talking about like the wires in the circuit board? Yeah, That's so, trace. right. Yeah, sometimes you maybe overheat it, damage the trace. And the, the schematics you pulled from their website, where'd you get those? I mean, they're all over online. Pretty much 
what makes these things work is you have this is changing a current that has this in that circuit and then between these two legs is this uh, capacitor and I think it's a 330k resistor that go to ground and I guess that creates the gain that is then focused on the resonant frequency by the, the changing of, of this and this, the way these interact with one another. Is this a true pass through when I hit the switch? This one is, yeah. How do, how do I know that? Well, I mean, when the pedal's not powered on, it'll bypass and go straight through, which means it doesn't have a <laughs> buffer. Uh, it has a it has a buffer, but it's not a buffered bypass. It's a true bypass. Super clean. Think it'll work again? Yes. All right. One thing to note: if you hear crackling, and while you're doing invasive work on the wah, you can clean out the potentiometer. So. I did that, I had removed it, and you unscrew the nut and washer there and take this out, and there's a plastic cap there that you take off, and then you can just spray deoxid into it, or you can use this, is the same as deoxid, but deoxid is the expensive stuff in the guitar stores, and this is the cheap identical stuff at Home Depot, Walmart, etc. And then when you're done, you can just spray out the rest of it with this compressed air. So that is a crucial cleaning uh, with your wah pedals too. All right, and to prove that the wah is fixed, Sounds like the pod is set just right. So we're fixed.